Right, morning folks. My name is Chris Warden. I am a retired professional safari guide. I've been leading and arranging safaris throughout Africa for the last 38 years. The story I'm going to share with you good people about the life of Dr. David Livingston, the Scottish missionary explorer, is one of exploration, discovery, which I say with a bit of hesitation, and liberation, which I think is the most important part of the story. I say discovery with hesitation because if you read your history books, they tell you that David Livingston discovered the Victoria Falls on the 16th of November, 1855. But did he actually discover the Victoria Falls? Definitely not, because the Tonga tribe were here for thousands of years before Livingston arrived here. But he was the first Westerner to document and publicized the Victoria Falls to the outside world. And he set a precedence for other early explorers to crisscross the interior of this part of Africa and map the continent. Because when he was here in 1855, it was truly darkest Africa, uncharted territory. Only the coastline had been documented by the Portuguese, the Dutch, and the British. And only 30 years after Livingston arrived here, in 1885, seven governments of Europe sat down together at the Berlin Conference, and they carved out all the political boundaries of the countries in Africa as we know them today. And you know what? Not one single African was invited to that conference. Typical. A prime example is the Zambezi River separates Zambia and Zimbabwe. I need a passport to go and visit my relatives on the opposite bank. And I've got a British passport, so I've got to pay a $50 visa every time I go across there. Absolutely ridiculous, but that's another story. 20 years after that, so exactly 50 years after Livingston arrived here, in 1905, the railroad reached here from Cape Town. The wonderful bridge that you've all seen spanning the gorge below the Victoria Falls was constructed, and the iconic Victoria Falls Hotel opened her doors to tourism and trade. Now you think of terms of, let's say, American or Australian history. 50 years is a very, very short time, from uncharted territory to commerce and trade, and David Livingston has firmly left his thumbprint on this area. The city on the Zambian side of the Victoria Falls is named after him, one of the few African cities to have kept its colonial name. And the statue that you will all see at the western edge of the Victoria Falls is one of the few statues of a colonial that is left standing. Most statues have been taken down, put into museums for various political and social reasons. But not David Livingston, because the people still love and respect him, including all of our mad politicians. Now you wonder, what on earth was he doing here all on his own in 1855? 